Let's create a painted artwork about opposite or complementary colors and emotions. The first thing we'll need to do is divide our paper into six sections. We're going to do that using a ruler and a pencil. Since my piece of paper is 10 inches by 15 inches, my squares are going to be five inches square. So I'm using my ruler to measure the five inch mark. And I'm going to make that same measurement in three places and then connect my dots to divide the paper in half. Now I'm going to line the ruler up along the bottom of my paper and make a mark at the five and the 10, again in five inch increments. And then I'm going to do the same thing but moving my ruler up to that middle line that I drew and mark the five and the 10. Now I'm going to connect the bottom dot to the middle dot and that will give me a straight line and then do it again, moving over the bottom dot and the middle dot and connect it with a straight line. And now I should have six sections or six squares on my paper. Now I'm going to repeat the same thing again on a second piece of paper because we need two pieces for this project. So two pieces that have been divided into six equal squares. The colors on this color palette have been placed to match the colors on the color wheel. So we have red, yellow, and blue, the primary colors. And then we have orange, green, and purple, the secondary colors. And from that, we also can see where they fall on the color wheel opposite each other. So red and green are opposite each other, yellow and purple are opposite each other, and blue and orange are opposite each other. For this project, use a larger flat brush. That's going to give us the best coverage. The first color we're going to be using is going to be red, and we're going to be using that in the upper left corner of our paper in that square. We're going to paint with smooth horizontal strokes to fill in our first square. Now we're moving on to blue, which is the second of our primary colors, and that is going in the middle square on the bottom half of the paper, again using mostly horizontal strokes and just filling in that square as best we can without any streakiness or leaving any white spots. The last of our primary colors, yellow, is going in the top right corner of our paper, and again we're just filling that in with our horizontal strokes, the reason that we skip some squares is because we don't want to accidentally mix colors. So while the paint is wet, it is a lot easier to accidentally mix colors when the squares are right next to each other. But by skipping around on the paper, we are preventing that from happening. Let's talk about opposite colors. So red and green are opposites and we are looking at our paper. So if red is on the top, Opposite of that is the bottom, so we are going to go with green right underneath the red to represent the opposite colors and the opposite placement on the color wheel. Next, we are starting with blue, and blue is opposite of orange. So above the blue on our paper will be orange, so if blue is on the bottom, orange is on the top.
that leaves yellow and opposite yellow is purple. So if yellow is on the top on our paper, purple is going to be on the bottom. Remember, we have two papers. So we are going to repeat everything we just did with the paint on this paper on our second paper. So go ahead and get that second paper painted and then when they are both dry, we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Of your two papers, choose the one that you think you maybe had a few mistakes on or didn't paint as well. And then you're also going to need scissors, a pencil, and something that is a circle that you can trace. First thing you're going to do is cut out each of your painted squares. So go ahead and use your scissors and carefully cut along the painted edges so that you'll have six separate color squares. Now we want to make our six squares into six circles or use them to make six circles. So you're going to take whatever it is that you found that you can trace to make a circle and place that on the back side so that the paint is against your table and you're looking at the white side of the paper and place that down and trace around it. So if you have something like a roll of tape, you could trace on the inside and get a smaller circle or you could trace on the outer edge and get a bigger circle. You really wanna to try to make the circle as big as you can so that it still fits on the square. And you're gonna do that same thing for each of your square pieces of paper until you have six pieces that have a circle traced on the back. Once you've finished tracing the circles, it's time to cut them out. So you can cut them out one at a time, just very carefully nibbling along the edge of the circle with your scissors until you have a nice round circle cut out of the paper. So that is a great way to do it. You can do that for all six pieces. Here's a little shortcut that you can do if you are really good with cutting with scissors and you are able to hold the two pieces together firmly without letting them wiggle around or move, you can stack two pieces on top of each other and cut them while two are together so that when you finish cutting out the circle shape, at the end you'll have two circles instead of one and it will have taken you half as much time to cut out than if you had cut them out one at a time. So that is another option if you are really good at cutting and you can hold the papers together then you can get two circles in the time it takes you to cut one circle. Now that you've got all your circles cut out, let's see how good your memory is. Can you arrange the circles in the same order that they were when they were squares so that you have the opposite colors positioned one above the other? Now you're ready for your second piece of paper, your cutout circles, a bottle of glue, and something to draw with. You could use a crayon or an oil pastel. Arrange your cutout circles so that the opposite colors are on top of each other. So for example, the red square would have the opposite color green circle on top of it. The green square would have the opposite color red on top of it. The orange square would have blue and the blue square would have orange. And then the yellow would have purple and the purple would have yellow. If you are sure you've placed your colors correctly, you can start gluing them down. Apply the glue around the edge of the circle. Then you can use your finger to gently spread that glue so that it goes all the way to the edge without oozing out. You don't want it to ooze out and then you'll get like a big blob of glue on your paper and that's not going to look very nice. So try to keep it as smooth and clean as you can and then press it down onto the paper and you might have to hold it and press it for a little bit just to make sure that it doesn't peel back up. You're gonna do that for every single circle, gluing them onto the appropriate squares. With all the circles glued down, you're ready to turn them into emojis. So let's add some emotions to our circles. You can choose to use a crayon or an oil pastel. I'm going to use an oil pastel. Everyone can have different opinions about which colors represent which feelings. So what you pick for your feelings on your colors could be very different from what I pick, and that's okay. For me, I'm going to start with green and the feeling that I'm going to use on the green circle is surprised. That is what I think green is going to represent for me right now for this artwork. So I'm going to go ahead and draw what I think a green emoji would look like. 
your idea of what that emoji would look like could be very different or you could do a different feeling or you might not even use surprised for any of your colors and that is okay. So your art can be whatever you want it to be and however you want it to look. Next, I'm going to work on the red circle and I am going to use angry as my emoji, but you could pick a different feeling for red or you could pick a different color for angry or not use angry at all. Now I'm moving on to the blue circle and the emoji that I'm making or the emotion or feeling that I'm making to go with blue is going to be calm. I really think blue for me is going to be calm. You might pick a different feeling for blue or you might pick a different color for calm or not use it at all. So now I'm moving on to the color that's opposite blue or orange and on mine I'm making my orange look a little worried with kind of a wobbly mouth and some big eyes, but you could pick a different feeling for orange or a different color for worried. Remember your art is your own. Now I'm working on my purple circle and I think my purple circle is gonna be maybe a little bit silly. Maybe my purple circle's being a little silly or it might be a little bit mischievous. So I'm going to make a winking face on my purple circle with one eye open and then one eye closed. So you could do any feeling you want for purple. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. Remember, your art is whatever you want it to be. And that brings me to my last circle or the yellow circle, the one that's opposite purple. And yellow for me is going to be happy. But again, you can make yours anything that you want. 